What's up guys? This is Mark and um, a lot of you guys have been requesting a residue guide for Mythic Plus so that's what we're gonna do here today. And in this guide I want to go through the talents, the stats, the s right traits, trinkets, consumables, healing rotation and damage rotation. And we're also gonna go through a little bit of uh, important add-ons and weak hours that I think is worth to use. So without further ado let's uh, just head into it. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about the talents here. And um, I'm just quickly gonna go through them and then I'm gonna go a little bit more in depth uh, after. So in, in the first tier, we have a Scenarium Ward. And for the second one, I use Renewal. And the reason why I do this is because um, I don't feel like I need Wild Charge that often. And Renewal is really nice for um, some dungeons. I, I will show you an um, example later. Feel affinity for the extra DPS and in some cases you could go Guardian Affinity, but I would really recommend going Field Affinity because uh, healing damage actually means a lot on the higher keys in order to time the, the specific keys. For the next row we have Typhoon and this is just good for um, like if, if your tank needs to kite or you can, you can actually stack mobs up together and um, it's just a, a good defensive but you can also use it uh, offensively. And then for the next one you have Cultivation. The reason why I play with this one is basically because of your mastery as a druid. And whenever uh, a target that has rejuvenation on them drops below 60%, they will get an extra hut. And depending on how much mastery you have, uh, this actually means a lot because of your healing. And um, for the next one I have Spring Blossoms. And this is also because um, then your efflorescence will apply an extra hut which also, again, means that uh, the more mastery you have, the, the bigger it is actually, um, like the, the, the bigger an influence this actually has on your healing. And then for the last column, I always use photo. The reason why I do not play germination, it, it's simply just too many global CDs in Mythic Plus. And um, again, your DPS as a healer is really important in Mythic Plus. So that's the reason why I take this one and not germination. Okay, so the first example here is in Temple. and. The third boss in Temple here does enormous amount of AoE damage on your whole party. And uh, in order to save as much mana as possible, because this is actually a quite a long fight, on, on this level 23 we spend 3.5 minutes in this fight. And as you can see my HPS is above 60k here, so it's really really healing intensive. So for Temple third boss or Tollegor the first boss, I really like to have abundance. So here comes an example of me using prosperity and I like to use this where, whenever there's cases where you can um, where there's like random single target burst healing that you need to do. So in King's Rest and Freehold this is a very good choice because of uh, the golden spit in King's Rest and in Freehold you have on the first boss in the first phase there's random shots from party members and you have um, like in case you have the Edura event here on the second boss so it's really nice to instantly be able to top people. Okay, so for the last option we have Scenarium Ward here, and uh, Scenarium Ward is a heavy healing over time ability, and it's super good, especially in a boss fight like this, where there's like a debuff that is ticking, and the boss is hitting super hard, and um, it's just a, a super strong healing over time ability to use. So I use this in every single dungeon except for Temple, uh, Taldegore, King's Rest, and Freehold Keys. Okay, so just to quickly sum up the talent here. Uh, I like to go Abundance in Temple and Super High Tullegore Keys, Prosperity in Freehold and King's Rest, and Scenarium Ward in the rest. Uh, Feel Affinity in every single dungeon except for um, Tullegore on really high keys, I actually tend to go Guardian Affinity. And the reason why I do this is because at the moment the, the cannons in Tullegore is just so crazy and uh, it's basically killing all the trash so your dps is not needed as much in that dungeon and um, you actually have a lot of time if you have a pro if you have a proper uh, route for this and uh, i think the highest we did was we killed like 72 percent of the trash in the dungeon by, by the cannon so your dps does not matter as much in that dungeon so now let's head over to uh, the stats of the rest of route okay so heading over to the stats here your main stats is going to be haste and mastery and then after that I would prefer to stack crit and then versatility. Um, I try and keep my haste and mastery quite high. Depending on the dungeons you could lower your mastery a little bit and try and get a bit more crit. Uh, like on dungeons that are not as healing intense. So for example Shrine Keys, uh, Shrine of the Storm. You could lower your mastery a bit and try and up your crit a little bit more in order to do some more damage in the, in the dungeon. 
but in a high temple key, as you saw before, there's a lot of healing required. So try maybe lower your crit a little bit and then stack your mastery uh, and haste higher. So this is definitely what I like to do. Um, but to be fair, there is no cap of anything. Like there's no haste cap, there's no mastery cap, there's no nothing. It's, it's basically what you feel comfortable with playing uh, like. And um, as many of you probably know, I do not raid. So all my gear is basically um, from Mythic Plus or a little bit of heroic rating. And then I, I do the first plus Mythic um, every single week, but that's about it. And just in case there's any new Residue out there uh, that doesn't know exactly what the Mastery does, then um, what, what it does is that, let, let's say you have 20% Mastery just to make it simple. Then every single HUD you have on that target, every single HUD is going to increase the healing done to that target by 20%. So mastery is definitely a super strong uh, stat to have here as a rest of druid. Okay, so heading over to the s right rage here. This is a little bit harder to actually talk about, but there's so many different options that you can play with. But I'm, I'm going to give my uh, thoughts about what I think you should play with. So the first two trades here I would recommend is definitely getting the Groove Tending. And the reason why you want to get this one is because of the mastery that we talked about before. And you only want to stack one Groove Tending because of this extra hut that is going to increase your healing done by all your healing abilities. The second trade I would recommend you getting is High Noon. And the reason for this is because High Noon is a spell that does the most damage of all your spells throughout the whole dungeon. And... Um, Increasing the radius and damage of this is going to help you for one your save global CDs because you don't need to uh, Reapply high noon if the if the pack is a little bit uh, spreaded and also Just the, the the flat damage increase here is really good. Okay, so groove tending and high noon is only two uh, Trades and we have four more to go. So if you're raiding, I would definitely uh, choose treacherous covenant what this does is that it increases your insulate by a huge amount and um, you can use this for healing and damage. And remember, damage is also important in, in Mephi Plus here for healers. Um, if you're like me and you do not raid, you could go for a trade like Trade Winds, um, but this is only going to increase your mastery and, uh, and not your damage. So depending on the dungeon, I, I would choose Trade Winds or anything else that actually uh, can proc me stats you know for example in in uh, a dungeon like temple again it's a really good example like, like you need a huge amount of healing so trade wins is definitely a good choice here but if you play then uh, shrine of a storm where you don't need as much healing then you could maybe go for a trade like blightborn infusion or you could go for uh, swirling sands or even blood ride and, and stuff like this and to be fair like i'm actually a fan of any trade that can just proc your stats because stats is going to increase your damage and healing most likely unless it's trade wins of course which is only going to be the healing but this is really good for like the temple and, and toddler gorkies which is really healing intense for example but of course as right piece is, is a little bit complicated so you cannot always get exactly the, the the trades that you want and exactly the combination that you want so another good option here is uh bonded souls and again this is only if you're raiding because this doesn't drop from um the, the mythic plus dungeons and um bonded souls i have not tried it on a high item level s right piece but <clears throat> my fellow high rated uh residue players they they told me about it and it's actually a really really good trade but if you cannot uh, get this as well then rampant growth or early harvest is not a bad choice as well but then you you need to remember rampant growth and early harvest is not going to help you increase your dps okay so heading into the third ring uh, my favorite traits to pick inside this ring is going to be uh, Blood Siphon, Life Speed or Overwhelming Power. And uh, Overwhelming Power um, is actually a super good trade and it, it, it procs pretty often and it's a lot of haste that you get from this. Uh, so this is one of my favorite at least. But basically anything that gives you raw stats is really really nice. So for the last defensive ring here, um, what you should aim for is either Resounding Protection or Ursoc's Endurance. These two traits are super strong for defensives. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about Trinkets. And again, for Trinkets there's like a lot of options you can use here. Uh, personally, I use a PvP Trinket, but not everyone can get this if they don't PvP, of course. Um, I, I got this from my weekly PvP chest, and what it does is that uh, it gives flat intellect, and then on use you get nearly 1000 versatility and if you check my versatility here whenever i practice i gain nearly 12 percent more versatility 
And the cool thing about this is that I can use it for healing, but I can also use this for damage. And my second choice of trinket here is um, alchemy trinket. And um, this one actually procs really, really often. And it's, it's 1600 intellect for 15 seconds, which is pretty much. And also it's going to increase your, um, your healing pots and your mana pots effect by 40%. So in super healing intensive fights where you need like a lot of mana, for example, again, in, in Temple and Tolle Gore, um, this is like super, super big actually. I'm, I'm going to show a clip here and you can see how much mana you actually regen, especially if you use um, Potion of Replenishment. So as you can see here, I use Potion of Replenishment together with the Alchemy Trinket and it's going to give me around 35k mana and then you have your passive regen as well. So I actually go from 60k up to 100k mana again. But since everyone is not doing PvP, then the trinkets you could go for is the trinket from Shrine of the Storm called uh, Conch of Dark Whispers. Uh, this one is super strong and you can farm for this because you can just pay Mythic Plus all the time. And uh, if you cannot get this one, then you can also try and get the one from Tolegor, Ignition Mage Fuse. Uh, this one is super strong as well because Haste, you can use it again for damage and you can use it for healing. Um, or even the one from Waycrest Manor, the Banefire branch is also pretty good. But um, then again, the passive on this is just going to be mastery. So it's only when you actually use this one, you can you can benefit from the damage from the Dringit. Um, but otherwise, it will just be passive extra healing. And a lot of people have been asking me about this Dringit right here. It drops from Battle of Bazaar Lore. And um, it's, it's from the first boss, so it's, it's pretty easy to actually uh, get this Dringit. But personally, I do not like this ring. Even though I have it uh, 420, as you can see, uh, I do not use it anytime. Like, I never use this ring. Because the thing is, that the use you get from this is only um, an absorption. You cannot use this for damaging. If you compare this ring to, uh, to the PP ring I have, for example, this one I can use for healing and I can also use it for damage. But this one right here, I can only use it for, for, the, for, for healing. So let's talk a little bit about the consumables here. So the three things you're going to use the most is Spice Snapper, Sugar Crust Fish Feast and Seafoam Coconut Water. And you might think, why, why do you want Spice Snapper? It's versatility and your Resident Root and that's your least wanted stats. Um, but let me explain to you. In Mythic Plus, you, you don't have a lot of time to drink in between pools and stuff. So what you're using here is Sugar Crusted Fish Feast. And um, Sugar Crusted Fish Feast is overriding any food buff that you have except for if the food buff you have is um, a higher versatility buff than the fish fish can give itself. So if you eat the spice snapper, you get 70 versatility for one hour. But if you eat the sugar crust of fish feast, you gain 45 versatility for 20 minutes. That means if you just ate, uh, let's say a sanguinated uh, feast that gives you 100 intellect. And then after the first pool, you're gonna, you're gonna drink uh, from fish feast because you, you need your mana. And what happens then is that your fish feast is going to override the sanguinated uh, feast. But if you instead of the like in the beginning of the dungeon, if you actually ate the spice snapper that gave you 70 versatility, then you would you would have 70 versatility instead of 45 from the fish feast. So this is just a way to do like a super small min max, but it's, it's still worth something. The cool thing about the fish feast is that you can actually drink either mage food or sea foam coconut water together with the fish feast at the same time and by doing this then you gain 15% mana every single second. So heading over to the pots here, the one I use for damaging and healing is battle potion of intellect. It's 900 intellect for 25 seconds which is going to increase uh, your healing and damage by a lot. For mana wise you want to go with custom mana potion or potion of replenishment. It's not every single fight where you can actually get a potion of replenishment uh, in because maybe the fight is too healing intense or you just don't have time to it or um, anything like this. So cost of mana potion is also really good to have. And the next part is going to be life food potion. Um, it's basically just a part to increase your movement speed. But since you're a druid, you do not really need this that often because you have your dash. But in case that you, uh, let's say your, your whole team is wiping or something and you need to get uh, throughout the whole dungeon or something, then this is a very good way to, to speed it up a little bit. So the last part here is custom healing potion. And the cool thing about this pot is that um, it does not share cooldown with your other pots. And also, again, if you have an alchemy drink, this is going to heal 40% more than it usually does. And then the next one is going to be health stone. And 
the Hellstone, you might think, uh, how, how are we going to get Hellstone? We don't have a Warlock in our group. But the cool thing about this is that you can actually go to your Proving Grounds, either in your Garrison or in your Order Hall, and then you can pick those up. And you can do this every, like, there's no cooldown on it. You can do it all the time if you want. So every time before a dungeon, it's a really good idea to actually grab those health stones. Last but not least, we have the Flask, Scrolls, and Runes here. Um, obviously, we, we are the healer here, so we, we want to get um, the Flask of Endless Fathoms. And this is going to increase our intellect by 238. And um, if you have the money for it, like, this is really expensive. I think healer is probably the most expensive role to actually play in Mythic Plus. Because you need to buy all these consumables, you need to you need to buy fish fees, you need to buy like everything. Um, but if you have the money for it, buy Battle Scar Augment Rune. Uh, it's gonna increase all your stats by by 60 uh, for one hour. And then if you don't have a mage in your group, use War Scroll of Intellect. This is um, it's gonna increase the whole party's intellect by 7% for 30 minutes. And then. Um, of course, you also you want the rest of the group or yourself, like whoever buys it, um, to buy stamina scrolls as well, and you also have the the AP scroll as well. But you just need to to get this intellect at least. Okay, so heading over here to the healing rotation. This is really really hard to to talk about actually because there's um, there is no healing rotation. There's like a, a few important things, but there's nothing like. Um, you, you cannot have like a fixed rotation like a DPS for example. So what you always want to do here is that try and keep a lot of huts up on the tank but don't spam heal him because you want you want to spend time doing DPS as well. But always keep your life bloom up on the tank at as the least amount of huts. Okay so as I said I wanted to explain a little bit about uh, add-ons and also weak hours at, um, inside the healing rotation here. So the thing is as a rested druid you're hutting up people so you need you need to know the incoming damage and on this bus specifically there is um, an ability called tantrum and on the high keys this does insane amount of damage so you need your whole party hotted up already so like if you if you forget about this and then you start hotting up whenever the bus is doing the tantrum then it's already too late so you need to prepare yourself here so therefore I'm using little wigs and, and big, big wigs and this is really good for showing timers on, on buses and stuff like this. And since we're playing photosynthesis then whenever there is like heavy full party damage incoming then you want to put your um, life bloom on yourself because then all your huts in, in the whole party is going to take 20% faster. But if there's just minor party damage and the tank is also going to take a lot of damage then keep the life bloom on the tank. But what we do here on the tantrums is that every time we get tantrum, we, we put the life bloom on ourselves and make sure to hot up all the, the party members. But it's also important to um, to time your um, your party's defensive cooldowns so that you you don't end up in in one tantrum. You have like um, you have no cooldowns and the party has no cooldowns and um, and uh, everyone is just going to take full amount of damage. So it's really important important on higher keys to, to coordinate the defensive cooldowns together with your healing cooldowns. So the thing you see to the left of my party frames is the party's defensive cooldowns. And this is very, very helpful as a healer so you can call out cooldowns um, if, if you're struggling with the healing. And this is a weak hour that uh, Naga has made from Method. And uh, I'm going to post a link in the description so you guys can go get it as well. So on the mother load, um, on third bus here, for example, it's very, very nice to have um, uh, little wakes and also have uh, this, this weak hour that Naga has created because on this bus, it does so much damage that you need to rotate defensive cooldowns for the debuff. You can dispel one of them and the other one, someone of the party has to soak or the warrior can spell reflect every second one of them. Um, so here it's very, very nice to have uh, this kind of uh, weak hour. Okay guys, so just to sum it up real quick, um, what you need to do is that you actually need to be believe in your huts. Like don't spam heal a team member as soon as they take a, a little bit of damage, unless that you, you, you know that there's more incoming damage, so your team members risk dying. But actually what you want to do is just throw them a few huts, let the huts slowly heal them up, and then you can spend the time damaging or spam heal the tank or whatever you need to do. And whenever there's heavy AOE damage incoming, you need to pre-hut everyone. And then you um, you use your um, wild growth right before the, the, the hit is coming. And, and basically, if, if it's not enough with the huts alone, then you, you spam regrowth as an additional heal to, um, to top people off. 
and also I'm gonna throw a link in the description um, for a weak hour that shows the incoming damaging abilities on your party members. Okay, so to the last point here, we have um, the damaging rotation. And what you normally wanna do is that when you go into a boss fight, you go in, you start in stealth, and then the first ability you do is a rake, because when you're stealthed, then the first rake that you do, like the, since rake is uh, the first ability that you do, then it will do 100% increased damage. Then right after that, you, you press rip, and then you go out, you apply Moonfire and Sunfire. So basically you have all your, your bleeds up now, all your dots. And whenever, whenever you run out of energy, then what you can do is that you go out and you hot the tank or whoever needs healing, you know, because it's very rare that you go into a boss fight where there's like no healing required. So this is what you can spend like the downtime where you don't really have energy or anything like this. But if you pop Bloodlust, then you will also have, um, uh, you will get energy way faster. Or if you pop your troll ratio, if you're playing a, 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 a normal troll, um, then you will also regenerate energy way faster. But basically try and just keep all the dots up at, um, at all times. And what they changed here from Legion is that no matter how many combo points you have, the rip is gonna do the same amount of damage. In, in Legion, you had to stack up to, to five combo points in order to actually be worth to use rip. So as you can see here, now I'm, I'm just gonna try and use um, uh, two combo points uh, rip on this. It does 1810 damage. And then I'm gonna use one combo point here. It does 811 damage. It's, it's basically the same here, no matter how much, um, how many combo points you, you, you spend your rip on. So it's all about keeping the bleed up time, like all your dots up on the target. And as long as you're doing single target DPS here, then you can easily have your, um, like all your bleeds up. And then you, you at some point, you will get um, five combo points anyways. And since you still have the debuff up here, like your, all your bleeds up, then you can use it on ferocious bite but try and get 50 energy before you do this because then your ferocious bite can do um up to 100 percent increased damage so this is what you want to do on single target and let's let's say you have two targets and what you want to do then is that you you do the same as you do on single target. you go in you do your rake you do your rip and then you go out you sun fire and you can actually you can actually get full bleeds up on every single target like there's only two targets so what you want to do is that you, you get the debuffs up and then you basically um, you basically try and just keep the bleeds up. You're, you're not going to get the rushes by it up here because it's um, like you, you won't have time to stack the combo points up. But you want to you want to just focus on, on trying and keep all the bleeds up here and some fire and you can keep moonfire up as well. But again, this really depends if the tank is taking damage like or or he's not taking any damage at all if he's kiting or, or whatever is happening um because you might not be able to get all the bleeds up here but when you have all your dots up and um your bleeds up as well then what you want to start doing is that you you start swiping because swipe is going to do more even though it's only two targets it's going to do more than than threat is uh, to one target for example so this is um this is a way you're going to do on on two targets but let's say you have like four targets or so then it's impossible for you to keep all your bleeds up so what you just do is you basically some fire and then you just start swiping and and this is this is basically what you do on on uh, big aoe packs and stuff like this okay guys so that's it for this video this video is basically um like how i play my druid and you might do it differently which is completely fine but this is my guide and that's how i do it Thanks for watching, I really appreciate it, I hope you liked it, and if you did, consider subscribing, and if not, it's completely fine. Peace out, boys.